Hi, I'm Brenda E.M. We're going to be tearing down this Harmonic Drive equipped Vexta stepper motor and with optical feedback. This is actually kind of a sad tear down for me because these motors are really neat. Uh, if you don't know what a Harmonic Drive is, it's basically a strain wave gear system and it works and keeps its accuracy by actually parts of it bend. This motor was kind of neat because it was a small compact and very strong because it has like a 50 or 100 to 1 um, ratio gear reduction box on it and so these are these are old robotic parts and um and and it was it, this was originally made for some kind of wafer handling um um uh, system in some matter of another this thing is made like a piece of jewelry almost the machining on it is really nice you can see the shaft is quite large for such a small motor because the small motor has its torque multiplied by 50 or 100 times and by the time it comes out in this end and you can see that there's uh, these motors were five phase and um, there was an optical uh, uh, pickup on this for uh, optical feedback for those of you playing along at home it's a five phase stepper motor and with this gear reduction each step is 0 0.0072 degrees and so that's uh, pretty small it's probably could be 50 to 1, might be 100 to 1, I don't know, it depends. Um, so these steps are really small, and um, unfortunately this motor seems to be dead, and it's uh, missing steps. I tried all the uh, wiring diagrams that I could find, and I just, it's, it's just not working right. And um, this was a takeout part, and um, so still I feel sad about this because this thing, this thing, this, this little thing probably cost well over $500 when it was new. And now it's it's gonna die. <laughs> so in the front we've got like a little flange here. And so at least in the electronic side, this is gonna be very destructive. But uh, there's a small chance I might be able to save the uh, physical part of this. We have some kind of uh, a chip here. And I think this is a comparator. And um, underneath I think we'll have some LEDs. And this is some kind of. Uh, some kind of photo transistor or some kind of optical pickup and um, over here in between the two there's a little disc which turns along with the motor and um, so anyway we're gonna get the get to uh, taking this apart uh, you can see there's a, like a flame proof resistor in here and it's like you know ceramic coated you know they, they, they I think they use pretty good stuff anyway there's some Phillips screws we'll take the screws out I feel bad about this but uh, I, I really believe, I really tested this motor and I just I can't get it working. So when I think when they made these motors, they would build them, you know, you know, whoever you wanted them. And uh, like if you could either have optical or no optical. And um, so, uh, so we almost have this off. We'll just take out this little hex here. And this will fit. And this seems exceedingly tight. I don't want to bend my Allen wrench. So this is not my best Allen wrench. Um, I, I'm afraid that this is really tight and um, maybe I'll even need heat to get this off, but wow, this is really tight. Well, I'm gonna change my plan of attack. What I'm gonna do is pull the electronics off the back to try to get some more access to this uh, encoder. And in order to do that, I, I'm gonna do it just kind of destructively and um, I'm going to take a pair of snips and snip this uh, these little three supporting rings off here. I'm hoping that uh, as I get inside that there's still a chance that I might be able to use the drive mechanism. That's what I'm worried about right now. And um, But uh, let's see. I'm going to undo the flame-proof resistor and these little wires for the... Uh, For the board. Anyway, the encoder wheel apparently was glass. I had no idea, and uh, that couldn't have made it any cheaper. This could be the light, and this could be the pickup. So um, I had no idea that this was glass, and um, that would have been quite, actually quite valuable. But you know, you learn these things as you go along, unfortunately, and. Um, Anyhow, I applied some heat to this um, encoder holder, and um, fortunately, 
it's, it, uh, I was able to unscrew it and get it off. It's probably still hot. Um, one of these is probably some kind of light source and the other part is some kind of pickup. And um, maybe we'll get a, uh, be able to get a good look at this. And, um, and maybe part of the encoder wheel too. Now we're down to a, the stepper motor part and um, I'm thinking I'll go in this way and um, I'm trying to preserve this, but I still want to take a peek at it. And we have four Phillips screws. As, as far as I know, this motor is no good, and I still feel bad doing this. And especially so using such a destructive way of doing it. So I took off the other screw, three screws off camera, and I got this one fairly loose. Yeah, it's pretty long. Let's see. How about that? No, it's coming. So the, these are the coils that drive the motor, and um, they take a stack of metal plates that go up like this, and uh, they stamp them out and stack them up, and then they wind the wire around. And um, it looks like they machine this pretty nice too. Uh, this is a kind of a shame because this was this thing was such a neat little thing when they made it. And I appreciate the engineering that they put in this. And uh, these motors, you can see all the leads. These are five phase. So, um, yeah. So I don't know. It looks like this could almost come out if I had a press. But they don't. Over here, we've got some kind of wave washer. And then we have the bearing, which seems to be sealed bearings, which are probably still good. And uh, I tend to save bearings like this. Uh, you never know when that might come in handy. I've got um, bearings used on my uh, 3D printer that are actually used. And here is the. Um, I don't know if it'll be. An, I, I don't know if it'll be a reluctor or an armature, but uh, here's the magnet assembly, and you can see the teeth. So this side is magnetic, and uh, so when you put power through it, those little. Uh, there's little magnetic fields that are made around those little teeth that affect these little teeth. And by altering the coils and stuff, they can make the motor work. So, um, I don't see any kind of date code or anything like that. And it's at, at this point where, where I wish I had a puller. So I applied some more force and we're going to walk the, uh, this end of it out. So what do we have in here? So the funny thing is about these, not much. And that's the beauty of these is that they're, 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 they work so simply. See this little wobble? So oddly, this is how this thing works. So there's like, this is like a barbarian race, but the outside is not concentric. It wobbles. And that's how it's made. And that part fits into this and uh let's take this apart so on the front there's uh four allen screws or hex screws and we'll just loosen those up a crack on this side fortunately these aren't that bad they've got uh looks like they painted them too so someone actually inspected these probably or they painted them after they got done <sighs> like safety bolts on a uh, on a bicycle or um, a motorcycle or something. Uh, there's a slotted um, screw slot in here and oddly enough using this contraption and a pair of vice grips I was able to loosen this which I, I was seriously doubting I was going to be able to do that but uh, oddly enough I can. I'm to the point now where I can spin this out as I take Spin, take this off. But if you do this, you have to, if you take the handle off, yeah, obviously you have to be careful not to poke yourself. And I think it's out. Wow, this is made weird. I was not expecting this. So there's. There's two, there's two bearings. I'd like to think they're, they're angular contact bearings, 
but they're probably not. And you've got a sc screwdriver engagement on this side. Unfortunately, this didn't slip. Let's look on this side. So on this side, you've got a pin and engagement. And we'll pull this out here. Wow, this is amazing. Let's see if we can get a better look at this. So this is when, it, when they said strain wave gearing. So this part flexes. Inside the housing, there's a ring gear of about 100 teeth on it. And uh, I believe that this is probably an interference fit. They probably heated up the, uh, the housing and, and slid in the gears. And uh, I see red on there, and that could very well be a red Loctite. So um, I'm not hopeful of getting this out. The device was originally invented by the same person who in also invented the bazooka, the recoilless rifle. And it's, it's pretty interesting how it works. And you may not be sure by looking at these parts how this thing works. And it kind of works like an inchworm. And I know somebody by the name of Kim who will be um, disappointed. I don't have any actual inchworms or caterpillars here. But they kind of work like this. So imagine if this little piece of wire is, like, is an inchworm or a caterpillar. And they kind of get around like this, if you've ever seen them. And they might have, they usually have more legs than this to make it happen. But this is kind of a peristaltic motion. And this is how our digestive system works too, as far as moving food around in us. We'll try to overlook this magnet assembly, but basically we have a shaft with a radial bearing inside of here that makes it spin nice. And uh, the motor turns the shaft. And um, this little thing here is eccentric. Um, if you see it, you can see it moving up and down. As um, But it's really converting um, rotary motion into kind of semi-linear elliptical motion. And there's ball bearings that you might be able to see go by that make that happen. Look, they're right there. Those little things there, the ball bearings. And then it's just coupled to the shaft or affixed, or fixed to the shaft. And um, so we have this kind of motion going on. And that motion um, deforms this little flexible cup here. And this fits over here, if I can get it on there, because I've wiped all the grease off. The motor turns the shaft, which turns the elliptical thing, which actually deforms the cup. You can see it. It's actually bending. And um, this motion is like if you have like a styrofoam cup and uh, you rolled it between the palms of your hands gently. And it's kind of like that. And you can see that there's teeth going all the way around this. And um, as this is being deformed like this, um, a swath of these teeth are coming in contact with the teeth are in here, which I'll get some light on. See the teeth right there going around the outside. And so a good number of these teeth contact these teeth at once, and they kind of average out the um, inaccuracies of a single tooth, which makes these accurate and which makes these strong. Um, I guess that the, um, the downside of these are is this, this cup has to be made strong yet weak. Um, you know, this is built on deflection. and um, But at the same time, these are pretty neat. And um, I think um, as a technology, I think it's an important technology. A lot of the European robots like the KUKAs um, use the same principle, but with hydraulic motors. So the, also the cool thing about this is very little backlash and it's very strong because there's a lot of teeth contacting at once. But um, this cup does deform. So I'm, I'm thinking that it takes a little while to get to all the values right on this. And um, machining this cup must be kind of expensive. It's got to be lathe turned and splined. Um, and likewise, it's probably never cheap to make a, um, uh, a ring gear such as that like we find. So this is the optical encoder that used to be on the uh, motor and uh, you can see it's 500 steps per revolution and it's a shame I broke it and um, but I need heat to get it off anyhow and uh, this is the optical um, pickup and or like it's a photo transistor photo diode something like that and there's not very many spots on it and um, there's just a couple delineations and there's like it looks like two looks like six spots on it and there's not very many wires on it so how this works is that this passes over the sensors and then the light beam is interrupted with a basically like a photo interrupter but this there doesn't seem to be that much accuracy in this so i want to look at the light source i think that's where the magic is 
So this is the edge of the light source. It seems to be like a little light box, maybe with an LED in it, and it's got a piece of glass over it. And I can't see really what's going on here, but we can pry it off. We'll probably break it, but, uh, and of course you always want to use glasses or something while you're doing this. And uh, let's take some of the pieces out and see what we have. Like so. Hopefully we'll be able to see some of what broke up the light. In order for this thing to be accurate, it needed some some really small rulings on it. And that's what we have here. Um, so this is just a mask that the light shines through. And you can see that this is, um, I think this is um, like a silvered um, glass with the markings on it. And um, and. Is five zero, so this is probably made for five hundred steps per revol rev revolution as well, and uh, you can see that there's little tiny lines on there, and uh, the rest of this I think is just an LED. Um, if we look down there, we can just see a plain LED, and there's only like two wires on here. Yeah, there's only two wires on there, so there's no magic. There's no magic in the LED. I mean, it makes the light. Um, the magic, the magic is that um, those other rulings mesh with these rulings, and so the light's picked up by this um, sensor right here. And um, so there's not that much precision in this. This is made kind of coarse, so they can mass produce these. So looking at these parts, I think mechanically I can still save this, and it can still be useful. Um, though what I need to do is support this uh, this little shaft here and uh, I guess um, what I'm going to do is pull these um, coils out of here and maybe leave these magnets here reinstall this bearing and the associated uh, thrust washer on um, this little wave washer um, back in here and use this for the spacer more or less and then I think I should be able to get it back together. So at least mechanically, it's not a total loss. And um, I do have the proper uh, controllers for these uh, motors. And I tried, there's two different schematics for this class of motor. And I tried them both and um, it's still not working. But at least mechanically, it will work.